Let's end this week's show with our interview last year with Holly Holm. She's well known here in Albuquerque and referred to by many sports writers as, quote, one of the best female boxers of all time. The Albuquerque native now competes in mixed martial arts, and Megan Camrick sat down with Ms. Holm after a fight in April of 2014. Now, in that bout, Ms. Holm won by a technical knockout and broke her arm. She told Megan what it was like to grow up as, quote, the preacher's daughter and why she chose a fighting career. Holly Holm, thanks for joining us on New Mexico in Focus. Thank you. Thanks for your time. Thanks for having me. So when you're in the ring and you're in the zone, what is that like? A fight is probably, you know, it is the most physically tiring thing you'll ever feel. But what people don't expect is how emotionally draining it is. And every round you have to be so focused on offense and defense all at the same time. It's not like a sprinter where they hit the go and you just sprint. It's like a chess match. Every time you, have, you make a move, you might be opening up for the other person to make a move on you. When you're starting to get tired and you're drifting and you think, oh, I just want to go out there and just go, just brawl with them. You know, it's really just staying focused the whole fight and keeping your, your game plan there makes a huge difference. And it's a very big achievement when you get out of a really tough fight. It's a, it's a feeling that you can't explain, but I hate to lose so bad. I want to just dominate all the time. What's going through your mind when you're in the ring? Every second makes a difference. Um, so I'm just watching for their movement and I'm just thinking, you know, you're in there in a fight. It's somewhat fun. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's fun if you're winning, but it's also you're on edge until the last bell rings because anything can happen until the last bell rings. And so I just think, you know, let's stay focused, Holly. Let's, you know, whatever the game plan is, is usually what I'm trying to think. And I'm also just, um, I'm also listening for my, you know, my trainer's advice. He's the one watching from the outside. So I want to try and do what, what they're seeing. Maybe the openings are of her and I'm just kind of there for the moment. When you really are there for the moment and you are really focusing on your game plan, that's usually when everything seems to be going right. One of your nicknames is the uh, preacher's daughter. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about that growing up? What was it like with your, your dad's a preacher in Bosque Farms? I love being a preacher's daughter. I think that a lot of that even helped with my career I have now. Um, dealing with different personalities and different families and different, you know, kind of being the center of, of the church and kind of, you know, um, I felt like dealing with all those different personalities and kind of some of the expectations mm -hmm. has made it easier for me to kind of just be even kill with, with some of the, the pressures of, of the career that I have now. Because you're supposed to be the best kid in town, being yeah. a preacher's daughter. Yeah, which we were a little crazy still. <laughs> what did your parents think when you said you wanted to go into boxing and then MMA? You know, I wanted to wrestle in high school and they said no way, because back then there wasn't really like girls teams. They didn't want me wrestling around with boys. And then I started doing the kickboxing, aerobics, and things like that. When I decided my first fight, I had my first fight the same month that I turned 18. So I guess I didn't even really ask them mm -hmm. if they gave permission or anything. I just said, this is what I'm going to do. And they came and watched me. And um, my dad says, you know, it's the oldest sport in the book. Everybody's got a little fighter in them. I'm trying to picture your mom, like her, yeah. her little She girl. doesn't like to watch. She just she stays like at home. She does a little, you know, she'll help me keep me well. She's a massage therapist oh, that's and handy. Um, definitely knows a lot about keeping me healthy. So, you know, she just kind of hangs out and waits for my brothers to call her and let her know how the fight went. <laughs> what intrigued you about boxing? Because I think people who don't know much about the sport might just see it as this kind of violent sport. What made you so good at it and why did you like it? You know, I just started kind of doing a kickboxing aerobics class to keep in shape. And then um, I was 16. When I was 17, I thought, you know, I'm going to start sparring just to see what it's like. And so I started sparring and had a really good time with it. And I told my coach, you know, I might actually just want to try a fight sometime, see what it's like. And I had one fight and I just knew I wanted to do it again. So nothing gives this much of a, a rush when you win. It's a really rewarding feeling. It's a it's different because it's all you. You don't have a team to rely on. You have to perform, but you also have to take away their game plan. So it's a little more of a chess match and just hmm. more of a sweet victory, I guess. So it's a little addicting. 
So you've defeated a who's who list of female boxers. Is that why you wanted to move on to mixed martial arts? Why did that seem like the next logical step? You know, I trained in an MMA facility, a kickboxing gym, my whole career. And a lot of times the girls would, you know, need somebody to help them train for a certain opponent. Maybe they might be my size or maybe more of a stand-up fighter. So I would get in and, you know, kind of mimic their opponent just so that they could get the work. And there was a couple times, you know, the coaches say, hey, if you can, just try and take her down. And I won't really know what I'm doing, but I'll just try <laughs> it. You know, I'll, I'll give it a go. I'll do anything to help them. And... Uh, I just kind of became one of those things that I had a, a fun time doing it. The more I started training with it and the more that I got excited about it, the more it felt kind of like a new spark, some kind of new goal. And uh, the way we say it is just a new mountain to climb, a new avenue. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily because everything in boxing was done, because there, there's still always going to be a champion uh, that's going to be arising. You know, there's, there's always going to be competition in any sport. I mean, just from an outsider's perspective, MMA seems a lot more brutal. You know, a lot of people think that it's a lot more brutal, but you think about actual brain damage, you, you see these men, you know, boxers going 12 rounds, the females mm -hmm. go 10, and it's mostly concentrated on hitting you in the head. And you might see more blood in MMA, but they're kicking their legs, their body, they're wrestling, they're doing takedowns, they're doing jujitsu. And so when you really think about it, how many blows do they actually take to the head? Not even a fraction of what you would take in boxing. So. I think that is probably the biggest misconception. Uh, everybody thinks it's this, you know, like animal dogfight type thing. And if the cage is not, it's not something to make it, you know. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of details and finesse, even in just submissions and grappling. And there's technique in wrestling. And then there's also your boxing and your kickboxing. Is there ever a sense of fear? Absolutely. Huh? Not a fear of getting hurt, but it's a fear of losing. It's the biggest fear you'll ever feel and it never goes away every fight I feel like that you don't care if you get hurt as long as you walk out with a win it's the end of the world if you lose a fight it feels like the end of the world it's you know you put so much time and effort into it and every day is and it's totally you nobody can fight for you you're totally exposed in there and what you do is going to be the outcome nobody can do it for you and not only that I mean you have these people that they might make minimum wage how many hours do they have to work to buy a ticket to go watch you. You don't want to let them down. You want to you want to win for the people. You want to win for the fans, the friends, the family, and then your coaches that have put so much time into helping you, your teammates that have spent so much time helping you. You want to make it worth not only your time, but everybody else's time as well. Holly, you seem like such a nice young woman, such a gentle demeanor. <laughs> what is the transformation that has to take place? Most fighters really are pretty even keel. Maybe it's because we get a lot of stress out in practice, but I don't know. <laughs> but, you know, you don't walk in thinking, I'm going to hurt this person. You walk in knowing that if it were up to them, they would be doing it to you. So you're in there for survival. It's not really, you know, you both, you both are uh, shooting for a dream. You both have this goal. Mm -hmm. You're following a dream. You can't have a dream by yourself if there's nobody else to fight to get there. So there's just that mutual respect that you're Everybody's just shooting for, for that, that goal. Two people sign up for it, two people train for it. There is no evil part in your heart. But yes, do I want to beat them? Yeah. If I see blood, do I want to hit them more? Yes, because that means I'm winning. And if it we're up to them, they would be doing the same thing to me if it was their choice. And so really it's more of a survival mode and uh, it's just a time to make it happen. And, and really that's it. Speaking of that April 4th fight, that was your first MMA championship fight. You beat Juliana Werner. You also broke your arm. Is this just a career risk? You know, I feel with anything, I, I'm kind of glad it was a bone instead of a ligament tear or muscles. Mm. And I mean, you can get a lot of things in a fight. You can get a torn retina. You can get Ooh. brain damage. You can get, I mean, there's a lot of things that can happen. Bones heal pretty good. If a doctor ever told me if you fight again, you might go blind because your retina, mm -hmm. I would quit. Mm -hmm. If they said, you know what, if you take any more hits, you're going to take too, too much brain damage or you're getting brain damage here or there's, you know, then I'd retire. In MMA, I mean, how often do fighters kind of get checked for things like that? Oh, uh, we have to have a physical for every fight. We have to have blood work every six months, make mm -hmm. sure we don't have AIDS, hepatitis B, C, you know, and I'm glad. Some people get annoyed having to go get their blood drawn. I'm kind of glad to know that my opponent doesn't have any of that. 
I feel like we actually go see doctors more than a normal person. I mean, I got knocked out and yeah. went to get a CAT scan. And, and then before I started competing again, I went back to make sure everything was clear and it was. What kind of message do you think this sends to women? Do you, does it encourage women to take on a sport some might consider violent? I don't see it as violent. I've seen a lot more violent things behind scenes, behind closed doors, behind, you know, this is just something that we choose to do. Mm -hmm. Like I said, nobody's forcing anybody to get in there with you. You both consensually do it. Is it empowering? I think it's been a big thing that's played a role in the fact that I feel confident in myself. I think that's a hard thing for a lot of women, um, especially going through middle school, high school, comparing themselves to every other girl in school and, you know, trying to be kind of the cute one, the fun one, the funny one, and trying to find who they are all at the same time and, you know, becoming an adult. Then even after that, I think, I think women can still deal with a little bit of self-conscious issues and things like that. And I think it's really played a good part in just helping me be happy and positive in life as a whole. This is a career that I've done myself. Nobody paved the way for me. It is a type of sport where, yes, you do have to kind of take control in order to do it. It's not just any kind of career, you know. Um, you're kind of your own boss, and it's your choice to get up and go run. It's your choice to get up and go to the gym, and it's your choice to go spar. And after those sparring days, after running, it's a sense of accomplishment, and I think that that has dealt with very much. Um, it's been it's been good for me. The role of women in mixed martial arts, it's sometimes contentious. Uh, I was reading an article about MMA fighter Matt Brown earlier this year was, I guess, had a problem with having women in MMA. And he actually said, well, they should at least be topless when they're fighting. Yeah. <laughs> Is, do you think that's representative? I mean, what kinds of challenges have you run into entering a sport that does tend to be more male dominated? MMA, it's getting a little more equal. Boxing mm -hmm. has never been on the same level. As far as career-wise, pay-wise, I mean, you don't see the best in women's boxing getting paid the money like the best in men's boxing. I mean, they're getting millions. That has never happened in women's boxing, ever. How often do you see women's boxing on TV? Right. How much do you see women's MMA on TV? You see it a lot more, and it's even a newer sport. So I feel like it's getting more even, and I feel like the girls that have been involved in the sport have done a good job at just fighting and really showing what they can do in order to open those doors and those opportunities. I think women can capitalize on some other things if they want to, but it's going to take a while to get there. And do I feel like it's as far as men are? No. But I just, I mean, I just definitely don't lose any sleep over that. You know, I figure I'm in charge of my own, my own path and my own decisions in life, and whatever opportunity is there for me, I'll try and make the best of it, and that is as far as I think on it. We live in a state where we have a high obesity rate, we have a high diabetes rate. I mean, do you ever see yourself being an advocate for health in New Mexico? The one thing that Mr. Winklejohn told me when I first started training, when I was asking him about diet, he said- The trainer. Yes. Mm -hmm. He said, um, it's pretty simple, just work out more than you eat. <laughs> and I said, that makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. I get sick. I don't want boiled chicken and yeah. steamed broccoli. Right. I actually never eat that. <laughs> I'll grill the chicken. I'll bake the chicken. Mm -hmm. I'll make a sauce. I'll look up paleo sauces or I'll make homemade curry sauce for it or something like that. You know, it's just you can be creative with healthy food and still make it healthy. Where do you see yourself in the future, particularly outside of fighting? You mentioned in an interview that, you, you know, you can go back to college at 40. You mm -hmm. can't go fight. Um, I do have my real estate license currently, and I've had that for about three or four years. To tell you the truth, sometimes I just want to go be like a Starbucks barista. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds fun to me. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm definitely glad I gave myself the chance to try this. I think it's helped me learn a lot of life lessons, not just in the ring. Mm -hmm. It's taught me a lot about self-drive, and it's taught me a lot about money. Mm -hmm. I mean, the first time that I kind of had a successful career. My, I don't make a ton of money, by the way, everybody. <laughs> I'm not talking like that. But. So word to the charities, don't come and knock <laughs> yeah. in. And then I also had to learn the hard way. Making myself an LLC mm -hmm. saved me a lot of money on taxes. And 
I'd learn that by having to pay a lot of extra taxes. I feel like it's really helped me learn a lot about business. I think it's helped me learn a lot about um, respect for all people. I mean, you walk into our gym, which I never had to learn this. I always have loved everybody, but you walk into the gym and it's, I mean, your best friends are of every race, every mm -hmm. religion. And we are, I always tell people, I go, I wonder what people think when we go like on a fight trip. We have every race you can imagine sitting at the table and every different age you can think of. Mm -hmm. We're all there trying to achieve a, a dream. And whenever, like say when I got knocked out, the only place I felt normal was to go to the gym because they'd be like, hey, Holly, because everywhere else I'd go, they'd be like, so you're retiring, right? And I'm like, no, <laughs> no, <laughs> we're getting married. You're retiring, right? No, I didn't ask my husband to change who he was and the passions in his life. And he doesn't expect that of me either. I've also learned in that aspect to kind of look at things differently outside of the gym. Um, I actually think I'm more careful of the things that I want to ask people or say to people mm -hmm. and I, I really try to just believe in everybody and, and encourage everybody with what they want to do. Um, I've learned that negativity can make, take a really big toll. I've learned how to filter it out, mm -hmm. um, but I, can, I, I, I am more conscious of that with other people too. It's taught me how to be okay with myself doing well. I feel good about belonging here. I don't feel like I'm undeserving or, un, you know, um, I feel like hard work will get you there. And I think that believing in myself, that has transferred over in every aspect of my life. Um, I mean, I could go on all day. Everything in the gym, I could relate to anything in life. It's, um, uh, this sport has definitely been a, a blessing for my life uh, and has changed a lot of the ways that I feel and look at things. And um, every day is a great day. If and when you have to retire or walk away, from fighting. It's going to be a depressing day. <laughs> and it's going to have to happen. You know, I think at this point right now, I would probably, if I was like, you know, I really want to have kids now, that'd probably be the only thing. I still feel like I'm in my prime physically and mentally. I still feel like I'm passionate. And those are the biggest things I think to be successful in MMA, boxing, fi fighting, anything, you know. I feel like that would probably be the thing that would maybe have me retire, but that's not going to happen anytime soon. I'm 32 and most of my friends are like, oh my gosh, I'm in my 30s, I don't have kids yet. I'm thinking, oh, I'm so glad I don't have kids yet. <laughs> Just because I want to do what I want to do so that when I do, I know that I'm going to want to put as much dedication into my family as I do, you know, in fighting. And I want to be able to put my heart and soul into that. And so I'll wait till that time. Well, thank you, Holly, for thank talking. You. This has been really interesting. Thank you. I'm Gene Grant. As always, we appreciate your time and effort to stay informed and engaged. And we'll see you next week in Focus. Get a preview of what's coming up on the next New Mexico in Focus. It's easy. Sign up for our weekly email at newmexicoinfocus.org.